Hey everyone, there's three questions with George Farrell. There you go, brother. All right, it's awesome to have George on. It's always awesome to have a George on the podcast. I'm really excited about that, right? And so uh, George actually is uh, in Whitman, Hanson, Massachusetts, and I'm actually joining you all for your school opening. So George, awesome to have you here. We just talk sports forever, and uh, I had to like shut it down because we probably would have never got a podcast in. So thank you for being on the podcast. I'm looking forward to joining you all. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we're looking forward here in Whitman, Hanson, to having you come join us and our opening day in August. And uh, yeah, talking sports, I can do that all day. All day, all day. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So George, we're going to do the three questions podcast. And so I know that you work with some absolutely amazing uh, educators, some teachers, I'm sure you've had them uh, in your past. But when you think of a teacher that really inspired you, who's someone that comes to mind and why? Uh, I would say that my greatest inspiration as a teacher um, would be my sophomore year in high school, uh, English teacher, Ra uh, Rob Ostry was his name. He was also one of our football coaches, but he was the person that, in my mind early on, could be a scholar, could instill uh, love of learning, love of literature, and then could still be human enough, in a sense, to say that if it's football practice, if it's, if it's life, if it's advice, he could still talk to you that way, too. So he was one of the first people that sort of transcended we're here for academics but as you grow up he recognized as students grow up we're 15 16 year old sophomores right. and he was able to also transition to hey here's what you're going to need for life and here's how we should talk about that and here's how the things that i think i can help you with so it was pretty impactful in in my growing up not only to lo love education and then sports and coaching but just more of a person who wasn't a family figure a person who wasn't just a teacher, but he was also, what he was doing was still teaching, but what he was right. doing was imparting and helping with life lessons. Like mentoring. We're going to give him a little shout out here. Yeah. Give him a little shout out. So, hey, I got to ask this question because um, I was a very, I was very disinterested in reading and, you know, novels and things like that. And I would fake it so hard when I was in high school, right? And, yeah. and not that, and actually, like, I remember. Uh, my English teachers very well and they were awesome. Like I really liked them, but it just, nothing seemed to click with me. Like I liked reading um, sports illustrated, but like, you know, that wasn't, I, I was a big Rick Riley fan. That was something yeah. really important to me. What, like when you say that he instilled love of interest like or a love of reading, um, do you remember anything that he did that, you know, really hooked you into wanting to read? Like, do you remember anything about that? Yeah, so in that class, it was pretty. Uh, it, it was it was a class that whatever you'd read, and we read some of the classics, Jason Amadeo. I think we did some Shakespeare, but he would also bring in current topics, and he would make he would talk about those current topics that you were reading, whether it's a book excerpt, whether it's something from the newspaper, whether it's something from sports, just so that he can still the love of reading in you and to always read. And then what he also did was he had the hardest vocabulary quizzes you could ever imagine. And he would basically, I mean, it's old school now, but he would basically make you study words and their definitions. And then you would have to find those and use those in, in books, in books that you find. So, so it was just this thing that set me on a road of, and I always like to read because I used to read uh, pro wrestling illustrated as a kid. Cause I filed, I what? filed my paper room money. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. So my father let me get a subscription to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and that's where I, I would read it back to back. I'd love what it came in. It was great. So I always liked to read as a kid, and this guy just branched it out into different areas. Oh, my God. Okay, so I actually – you are the first person to ever mention Pro Wrestling. I used to read Pro Wrestling Illustrated all the time as a kid, and it's it funny awesome. because it's like – it's kind of like fake too to think about it. Like they oh, played yeah. into the storylines and all that other stuff. And they used to have like the poster of the wrestler. Oh, yeah. oh my God. That's hilarious. Holly race was in it mostly every week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's what, yeah. And it, it, that at the time, um, growing on uh, now, this is turning into a wrestling podcast at the time, like this is before internet, the oh, only yeah. wrestling we actually had was WWF. Yep. And then I would only read about the other, and like, w, yeah. right like yeah nick block winkle and then early rick flair but yeah. georgia championship wrestling used to be on on the ted right. turner the ted turner atlanta braves network 
and you could sometimes watch that, and that would be in it with Tommy Rich oh and our God. early Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, that was great stuff. We got, we, we got to do like an old school wrestling podcast one day. I mean, man, yeah. no clue. That's that's amazing. All right, before I before I dive into that, I'm gonna get on to the next question. So um, I know your role. Your are you associate superintendent? Is that as an assistant associate? We call it assistant super, assistant superintendent. superintendent. So I know you guarantee you work with some incredible administrators right now. Um, I'm sure that when you were a kid, you had some, but so when you think of like an administrator who's had an impact on you, whether it's a kid, you know, whether it's someone you worked with, who's somebody you think of and why? Uh, the first person I think of is, uh, Mr. James Gibney. Mr. James Gibney was a former superintendent in Fall River, Massachusetts for nine years. And he hired me to be my first administrative role, which was an assistant principal in a five to eight middle school. So he's the person that really taught me what large issues are, what small issues are, what the role of an assistant, what the role of a principal is. And then he kept talking about the eye to the next level. So one of the greatest stories I have with Mr. Gibney is that um, he's the one who told me at the end of four years that it was time to go be your own principal. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, we like each other, we get along great. He was a father figure. Uh, we like each other, we get along great. But I see the questions you're asking are no longer about the decision I've made, but about the decision you would make if you were in that chair, he said, so that's now the time to go find and start your own career. And um, yeah, so we left beautiful and he, he was helpful in me getting my first principal job, which was the following fall. And uh, then I became a middle school principal for 15 years. Well, hey, well, we're not going to give him the air horn. Now we're going to give him one of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So yeah, yeah that, the, you know, the uh, consistent theme when I hear people talk about um, administrators that really had an impact on them is they actually push them into positions they're not just quite ready for. Yeah. And it, it forces you to grow. Right. Yeah. And, I, and that, that's a, a really compelling story because I think a lot of times we, we don't necessarily see ourselves in these roles and someone pushes us because sure. they super ready, even though we're not sure. And Correct. then it, it pushes you to, to get better, to really kind of Look at things in a different way. So I I love that. So yeah. you've been in education. How long have you been in education? How many years? Uh, this is my 29th year in education. 29 so, years. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you're 29 years, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that you've seen, a lot of things that you wish you could do over. So if you could go back to your very first year um, of teaching and and talk to young George Farrell, uh, not that you're not young right now, right? Because like, <laughs> right? We're all yeah. we're we're oh, all young. Yeah. Well, yeah. Even even though you know I'm 48 years old, when I was you know 15, 48 was like oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 48, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you when you think of that, your very first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? Uh, I think the best advice I would give myself is to make sure you've studied the reason behind the action, yeah. just as much as you're going to study the decision as a result of the action. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is I started out in an inner city as a teacher. I then went to suburbia as an assistant principal. I then did 15 years as a principal and now I'm in central office. And the one thing you learn is that you don't always, you, yes, you have to make decisions and you have to move forward. But my, bless you, but my it's early true. self was more concerned with, did I make the decision so I can move forward on to the next thing? As I've grown and hopefully evolved a little bit, it's what are the root causes and the whys to why that thing happened in the first place? Right. And I think if I could tell younger people it's or younger administrators, it's just make sure that you know the whys to what happened because they're just as important or more important than what you have to do as a result of it. That You know, that's a, we're, I was just talking about this with... Um, a group and it seems like uh like a kind of superficial thing but i actually talked about this in the interviewer's mindset we, yeah. we i remember seeing a school replace um like their their vending machine food like they had yeah. chips chocolate bars all this other stuff and they wanted kids to eat healthier so what do they do they replace it with carrots right, right. they put like all this healthy food in it and the kids are like i'm not eating that right and part of it, and so what would happen was they actually counted on that revenue from the vending machine for like budget stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're putting in this healthy eating 
and the kids are like, I'm not eating that. I'm going to go to 7-Eleven. It's like a block away from school. And then they buy these gigantic bags of chips because they had to walk five minutes. Right. And that's so now they got to reward themselves for that walk. And so I know, like, what does that have to do with what you just said? The reality of it is, is like, how do we get actually kids to see the benefits of eating healthy as opposed to just force them to eat healthy Correct. without actually getting them understand what what is the benefit of that? Right. So, Correct. And so Correct. that was a thing is that like just changing stuff for the sake of change doesn't right. actually make things better. Right. You, as you, as you share. So I, I love that. And uh, it's, it's awesome. Um, I gotta admit, I'm most excited that we're going to be talking wrestling when we get off the podcast. So we're in. that I'm all over. I cannot believe uh, pro- <laughs> I had, I had every one of those posters up in my room. I That's remember right. that. So, yeah. so anyways, George, thanks so much for being on the podcast. I can't wait to right. learn for more from you and uh, connect with the community as well. Sounds great. Thank you so much.